Well, thank you both again for taking the time to speak with me. I appreciate it. No, no problems. Nice to meet you, Karen. You too, thanks. <laughs> Okay, so I wanted to get started asking about the development of the script for the film and what was that inspiration in writing the script and working together on creating the story for the film. Yeah, it's, you start. Okay. It, it first popped into Joseph's head and yeah. then it became something else in my head. So one day I was trying to take a nap and I was laying there in bed and all of a sudden it hit me, this brilliant idea that we could make a really low budget do-it-yourself movie where there was one camera pointed down at my face the entire film without <laughs> cutting in a haunted house where there were spooky things happening but it was kind of on the periphery and you would just hear these sounds and um it would be like this really cool gimmick movie like hey have you seen the movie that never cuts it's just some guy's face the whole time and i pitched it to vanessa all excited and she was like that's a bad movie mm -hmm. I was like, okay okay you're right so mm -hmm. i stopped talking about it but then she kept bringing it up and and she started asking like well what if there were more cameras what if we could justify a way to make it more cinematic and kind of cut like you normally wouldn't do in a found footage movie and so that's when we started adding what if he sets up cameras throughout the house and he has some kind of interface where he can do a, a live editing thing. And then from there, it just kind of grew into Deadstream with this um, somewhat futuristic platform that he's using. And then um, I mean, maybe you can go Yeah, we almost got more interested in the format before the character. So I think that we were just kind of riffing off of this idea of a live stream that would be entertaining. You set it up as a broadcast where you could cut between multiple cameras and interact with the audience. And then um, we started talking about a character. I, I mean, pretty early on, there was a character pitched that was just kind of a silly weenie in, <laughs> in a haunted house. And I think we just kept sitting on that and it became funny in our minds. And then I think it really solidified with me when we had a villain with some personality um and then um i think and this was this was a long time ago i'm trying to remember what year we were first tossing around the script but it was kind of before it was kind of right at the beginning of all the big youtube controversies kind of like the original ones with pewdiepie and stuff and so that yeah it's really it's really interesting to see how the culture has evolved since that first first idea of our main character coming off of an internet controversy yeah, so then it, it was uh, it was just film focused on the guy in the house and his comedic reactions to everything. But then once we started introducing the idea of what if Sean isn't a great person? What if he has a background of controversy and he's dealing with that? Then it suddenly became much more interesting. And that gave us a lot more to work with as we tried to build out a story that people might be more interested in. Yeah, I think that's when the movie became itself and it became about relevance and yeah. And also uh, speaking about mixing the horror with the comedy elements in the film, I also liked that when I was watching the film. So I wanted to ask about that experience really mixing the humor with the horror elements as well. I, we're both really big fans of horror comedy. And I think we're fascinated with it kind of like everybody else about trying to get it right or what our version of that would be. Um, and so at least from my point of view, I think a lot of it came from trial and error. We did um, a lot of rehearsals. And even when we felt like we had a script that was killing it in like a writer's group, once we started rehearsing, there was a lot of, um, there was a lot of stuff that wasn't working. It was a very difficult character to not make too abrasive, abrasive at least in like from my point of view. Um, so we really rehearsed it to death and did lots of rewrites. Um, and I think as far as getting the scares to work, I mean, sometimes I think we got lucky with <laughs> some of the gags really, really working. Um, but I think probably the hardest thing that we talked about the most was trying to keep it grounded, even though it got, the character got very, very silly and lots of the situations got silly. We still tried to 
pull it back into some moments where you were feeling scared for this guy? Well, if you, know, if you, you start, if you can't, I don't think you could start a found footage movie properly and just have it be at 11, like something where it's, it doesn't resemble reality at all from the beginning. So I felt like with it being that found footage premise, we'd have to have that realism at first and then slowly ramp up until we were in Evil Dead territory and then Evil Dead 2 territory and it's sometimes Army of Darkness by the end. And so that was like something where early on we're like, okay, but we have to keep it both scary and funny. And I actually credit Vanessa with the movie turning out scary at all because at some point along the way, it started to become so joke heavy that I just came to peace with, you know what? This is a comedy first with some spookiness, um, but I don't think, I wouldn't call it scary. And I think we should just be okay with that. That felt like what it wanted to be, but Vanessa was no. It's going to be scary. <laughs> like we have to make it scary or we have not done our jobs. And so she really fought for that. And then ultimately, I feel like there are some scenes in there that actually turned out legitimately scary to my surprise. <laughs> yeah, they didn't, they didn't all work, but no. we, we, yeah, we made an effort. And also speaking about the rehearsals and also Joseph, I wanted to ask you about starring in the film as well and really working on the, um, that part of the film. Um, what was that experience like of really working on the acting side and working on the rehearsals as an actor as well. Well, that was really interesting because I had been in some films that we had made. I was in some student films. We met in college in film school and I would always cast myself and stuff, but these were just stupid short films. And I wasn't, I never considered myself an actor, but when we came up with Deadstream, because it originated as a do-it-yourself movie, we just always envisioned it as me. And then as the film started to grow in scope, I, we just never considered not having it be me. I didn't feel comfortable putting another actor through like what we did to Joseph. Yeah, that was, that movie. It, was it was very physically ridiculous. Yeah, that would have been that would have been a challenge to have to ask somebody to do some of those things. But um, when I was really surprised when we actually got into the production the pressure of a feature. I thought it would be just a long version of what I had experienced on a short, but it wasn't. There was actually this different kind of way and it was really starting to get in my head and I felt like, oh no, I'm buckling. The crew is gonna be so let down by me. I tricked everyone into letting me be in this movie. And so after the first day, we I talked with Vanessa and I was like, okay, I'm gonna do you have to try to protect me on set from the stress that's going on because it's just not working. I'm not really being able to hold up under the pressure. So she started treating me just more like an actor. We would talk between takes as directors creatively, but then with some of the logistical stuff that was going wrong, she was really protecting me. And that made a huge difference. But by protecting him, I think one of the, I mean, one of the things that I admire about what he pulled off is that um, the camera rig that he wore was really uncomfortable. The head rig was super heavy and I put it on to operate a few shots. And after 15 minutes of operating the camera, I had a really bad headache. And I was like, whoa, I, I am super shocked that he's wearing this for 14 hours a day. So there was this pressure on him. I mean, I, there was a lot of me not yelling, but strongly directing him to put his head in the right direction and hold like for the right amount of time. So it was literally him walking into a room and having to pace the way the camera is panning around for the scares in a very particular direction while also trying to give a performance that felt um, not just natural, but spontaneous so that it kind of fit that like rambly live stream feeling that we're going for. Also speaking about the directing, I also wanted to ask about that experience working together on set as direct, uh, co-directors on the film as well. We, we've done it before. So we've, ha we've had some practice. I think in some ways 
this film was almost a little bit easier because Joseph was in front of the camera so much that um, I guess, I guess like the communication was more streamlined because it was more me directing and then you giving feedback as a director through playback. Yeah, when we had playback, which was not very often. So, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> so uh, with the co-directing thing, before we ever got on set, we had worked the movie out so much. We wrote it together. We felt like we were on the exact same page. But then we showed up to shoot certain scenes and we realized as much as we had worked so closely together, we actually had different ideas of who Sean was and what his intentions were in the scene. So that was really interesting trying to figure that out over the first few days. Like I had something in my head and it was only that way. I'd never thought of it any different way, but her version was completely different. So we had to figure out, okay, which version of our two ideas of this character is it? And I feel like over the course of a few days, it really started to solidify to where we were like pretty yeah. pretty unified in the vision. I mean, I feel like the trick for co-directing is just preparation, which we did a ton of, but then there were still moments on set where we wouldn't give up a certain idea. Like I remember there were certain jokes that Joseph didn't want to say because he's like, I just, I don't think I can deliver that in a funny way, but I kept pushing for it. I'm like, okay, but let's just film it. <laughs> I'll just try it one more time. <laughs> And so there are little like co-directing things like that, where you don't give something up, even though you should have compromised in the pre-production. Yeah, that so, happens. That yeah. happens sometimes. <laughs> and then also I wanted to ask about creating the makeup and the visual effects for the film as well. And what was that experience like of creating um, the visuals for the film as well as the makeup overall as well? Well, for, let's start with references. So growing up, my dad and I watched House 1 and 2 a lot. And we also watched Army of Darkness a lot. One of my favorite movies of all time is The Gate. And in those movies, there are really distinct characters, the ghosts um, or whatever they are. They always have this really distinct look that's memorable. You could make them into an action figure, like that kind of thing. And when we went into the movie, we wanted that for the the creatures are the ghosts in our film. So when we talked to Troy Larson, who created those monsters, we uh, started pitching that idea and he was on the exact same page with us. He started dropping references that were exactly what we were going for. And fortunately for us, he, uh, cause COVID hit and that he got laid off from the job where he worked at a theme park making creatures as part of their attraction and so he was like this is a great time for me I could just get to work on it because I've got nothing else going on so he just started working on these creatures out of his garage mostly by himself he had some help sometimes but most of the time he was just a one-man band just making these things in his creatures and um, it was truly incredible some of the stuff he was showing us you would look at some of the detail that we told him would not be in the movie, but there it was like really specific details in the teeth and in eyes. It was, it was awesome seeing it come together. Yeah. He's also got a great sense of humor. So I think just him always upping the ante with the gags. He was a great collaborator and the effects makeup artist, Michaela Kester was also so awesome. She's just very committed to genre and creatures. And um, she, I, I mean, just down to the detail of creating like these amazing goos and textures, I feel like really added, added to the overall feeling of the film. And then um, lastly, I just wanted to also ask about bringing the film to South by Southwest and having the movie play at the festival and what that experience has been like so far being there bringing the film to the audiences at the festival as well? Uh, for me, it's been, it's been really fun. I, I was super nervous. We've done test audiences, but not, not in an audience full of people that didn't know us or had no connection to us. And so um, 
I, I feel like the first, we've just had one screening, but the audience was really fun and enthusiastic. Yeah, for me, it's the same thing. I, I was really nervous because of that, like knowing, okay, at South by nobody knows who we are. Nobody already thinks that I'm funny from knowing me in real life. So this is going to be a test about is our movie actually funny? And I really felt like that audience was just really generous to us in the movie, like uh, laughing a lot and having audible reactions. So that was really fun and satisfying to see that it felt like it was working. <laughs> great thank you both very much for taking the time out to speak with me today i appreciate it yeah so nice to talk to you karen yeah, nice to meet you karen you too thanks again bye, bye.